It is 3.35 p.m. Monday afternoon, October 3rd, 2022, Crescent, Pennsylvania. That eastbound manifest going up the east slope, Norfolk Southern Manifest, that had to be train, train 36G heading from Conway Yard west of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Abrams Yard across the Schuylkill River from Norristown, Pennsylvania and then Conrail Shared Assets takes the train from either Abrams Yard or West Falls Yard in Philadelphia onto Pavonia Yard in East Camden, New Jersey. Look carefully and you will see empty hopper cars that are no doubt headed to Haynesport Industrial Park for loading of construction debris. Lots of tank cars, no doubt headed down to Conrail Shared Assets, uh, Pensgrove Branch to Paulsboro, Pedricktown, New Jersey. This is a West Slope upgrade from Johnstown, Coloma area to not far east of here, the summit of the Alleghenies from Norfolk Southern, Galitzin, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> um, this was originally the Pennsylvania Railroad, and then the then it became the ill-fated uh, Penn Central, and then Conrail, now Norfolk Southern uh, Pittsburgh line, uh, <clears throat> just across the street where I'm staying, the station in here at Crescent, Pennsylvania, Pat the innkeeper that has moved from North Carolina has given me the okay to do a complete video tour of the station in <clears throat> of the station in for my YouTube channel and that will about is about to commence first let's have a look at the station in built in 1866 as the Collin House Hotel capital C A L L A N now, uh, if you're staying here at the Station Inn, restaurant-wise, this is uh, Front Street, kind of the main street of Crescent, which is 2,000 feet above sea level. Just a couple blocks down in this distance, looking east, is Vito's Italian Restaurant, good Italian food. And there's a blue sign at the entrance, CP Vito's Control Point Vito's donated by uh, Vito said the Conrail Historical Society. So I call Vito's Italian restaurant Control Point Vito's. And then down at the end of Front Street and then to the left is Crescent Springs Family Restaurant. They have good food. And one, one street, one block behind the station in the next street down uh, over, there is Dunny's uh, Pizza Restaurant, takeout food. And I've had good chicken wings there. And then diagonally, diagonally uh, in back of the station in, there is a the next street that parallels Front Street here. Uh, there is a Sunoco gas station inside the grocery store is a subway. They have good subs And then uh, If you're staying at the station in interesting places nearby to go to if you're a rail fan, especially uh, Looking west not far west of here is Cassandra, Pennsylvania Where this Norfolk Southern line goes through a really deep cut and there is a bridge over the cut so you can t take photographs or videos looking down on Norfolk Southern, looking west down on Norfolk Southern Freight's really deep, a really deep cut. In the other direction where the uh, 36G's heading, about 15 to 20 minutes by Uber or automobile uh, there is the world-famous Horseshoe Curve on the east slope. Uh, about a 1.84% grade, I believe, and then a little further east, where uh, <clears throat> a little further east is Altoona, Pennsylvania. 
Norfolk Southern has a freight yard there, Rose Yard, capital R-O-S-E. There's a bridge over the throat of the yard. You can look right down on the yard, uh, photograph, video, watch uh, switching activity, and some mainline freights uh, might be there for uh, recrew. Now, uh, now 36G did not have the usual manned helpers. Uh, EMD Stroke, Norfolk Southern, Juni, uh, Altoona, Juniata Works, SD70AC used that single unit shoving up the west, west slope on 36G was a General Electric unit and so it was probably a, a distributed power unit. Now let's go over to the Station Inn for the tour. And this goes back to the days of the Pennsylvania Railroad, a tunnel under the three Norfolk Southern tracks, originally Pennsylvania Railroad. And uh, beyond the three tracks is the interchange track between Norfolk Southern and R.J. Corman Railroad, a former Pennsylvania Railroad branch. It kind of goes north to Clearfield, Pennsylvania, now R.J. Corman Railroad. And uh, coal trains are interchanged on this on the track. And one time when I was here, a Norfolk Southern uh, grain train, unit grain train covered hoppers loaded with corn came in from the west. And then RJ Corman SD 40-2s coupled on and took it on up to Clearfield where there is an ethanol plant. Corn was going to the ethanol plant. Now let's go over and take the tour of the station in. Oh, here comes another eastbound. Let's just wait and get him. Eastbound Norfolk Southern Intermodal. go over to the front porch of the station in and show show you what a good view you have from the front porch I think the station in the website says it's 145 feet between the front porch and this uh, Norfolk Southern line And right next door to the station inn is a laundromat. I'm doing my station in tour for you, my YouTube channel now, John. Oh, okay. <laughs>
Lots of railroad artifacts here. Sometimes the bar downstairs is open for uh, special for special parties and groups. And here is John, another guest just arrived from Paducah, Kentucky. You're on my YouTube channel now, John. <laughs> And this appears to be a Baltimore and Ohio dwarf signal, not a Pensy dwarf, not a PRR uh, position uh, dwarf signal. And there to the right of John is a spotlight that shines a light on the passing trains. Cute little guy there. Now let's go up on the front porch. Watch your step sign that you would have seen on the vestibule steps of passenger train cars, including Pennsylvania Railroad passenger train cars. So here's the excellent view you get of trains from the front porch of the station in here. Nice long porch, plenty of comfortable rocking chairs. Sorry, I had my G's mixed up. That eastbound manifest was 38G, not 36G. 36G is a westbound. Or actually 39G, I guess. Yeah, I was definitely 38G. Here we have a radio where you can hear the Norfolk Southern Allegheny dispatcher talking and the Norfolk Southern crews and probably RJ Carm R RJ Corman uh, railroad train crews. Again, a nice long porch. There are eight rooms here. Can't go in this one. This is the Lehigh Valley room. All the rooms are named. All the rooms are named for fallen flag railroads except my room upstairs, the Black River and Western room, which Many of you probably know is alive and well and thriving, Black River and Western. Many visitors and guests have left souvenir license plates. Many with a railroad theme, such as SD 40 2, EMD Run 8, PC Penn Central SD 45. 
Now let's go inside for the tour of the Station Inn. Almost forgot this. You can salute trains. And guests can sign in here, which I did. Put your name on the board here. I'm Rusty Rail, i.e. Rush Sharp. We have Rocky staying here. Says he was a block operator on the Philadelphia Terminal Division of the Pennsylvania Railroad, then... Uh, the old faded Penn Central, then Conrail, and then Am ended up at Amtrak as a block operator in that territory. And I think he said he ended up as an Amtrak dispatcher. Here's a funny cartoon. Put my card up there, my calling card. And here we have the entrance to the Reading Lines room. This table here, we have breakfast. Fellow by name of Cliff comes in every day, seven days a week to make breakfast. Then he has a second job involving lawn care. Lots of books and magazines to read. Nice flat screen TV. Interesting mosaic. Says the station in Cullen House, Official guides, lots of books and magazines to read here. Nice uh, topographical topo map. Are you John? Yes, I am. Hey, John. And you can buy nice Station Inn crest, uh, Station Inn shirts oh, okay. here. Hi, Sid. This is uh, Pat, the innkeeper's dog, Sid. She lives in this area behind the main room. Hi, Sid. Hi, Sidney. Hi, Sid. 
Here you have complimentary, complimentary soft drinks available to guests. Complimentary pretzels, complimentary cookies. Here's the kitchen where Chris makes breakfast for us. Now let's go upstairs. Here's another fallen flag room, the New York, Ontario, and Western room where Rocky and uh, India's partner or wife are staying. Of course, this was the Pennsylvania Railroad East-West Main Line, so there's a nice Keystone logo here going up the stairs. And here is a mini bar, I guess you'd call it, where you can, guests can put their food that needs to be refrigerated or beer or, or a wine or soft drinks. Lots of interesting photos. Here's a great one, a horseshoe curve. Let's take a look at my room, the Black River and Western room. If you want the room made up, you put the green side there on the doorknob. If you want privacy, change it to red. And here's the Black River, my Black River and Western room. Santa Fe War Bonnet Hat, Pan Am Railways Bag. And here comes a train. You can see I, I can lay in bed and watch trains. There's a uh, Norfolk Southern going up the West Slope, eastbound intermodal. Can even open the windows. Get the real sound effects. Nice desk. I brought my laptop 
That present screensaver is from my visit to Ed Burkhart's Rail Polska privatized freight railway in Poland in uh, July of this year. Both days I was there, I got cab rides. Genesee and Wyoming calendar. One of my bags I brought. And this green bag is Hotel Montleon in New Orleans in the French Quarter, owned by the fifth generation of Montleons. Montleon is Italian for lions, so all their logos are lions at the Hotel Montleon in New Orleans. And in this Black River and Western room, there are four beds. Nice comfortable chair over here. Now, let's go on to the next room. Unless you want to wait for this intermodal to pass by. This is a nice feature which uh, Oh, by the way, uh, the former owner was Tom Davis. He passed away last October, died of a, a stroke and heart attack, was cremated, and this, they had a ceremony. They spread his ashes over the tracks at Horseshoe Curve. So this is, my, uh, this is a nice feature, grab irons. I think the new owner, Alex Lang, who I believe lives in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet. Uh, these grab irons have been added. The railroading, railroading uh, priority is safety first, and these are definitely safety first items. In my bathroom here in the Black River and Western room. You can watch trains from the bathroom. Now let's have a look at the other rooms. That's on my door here. And first we have the, those who know use the B&O room. That was their slogan that appeared on my passenger timetables. Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, those who know use the B&O. And of course in here there are B&O pictures. And isn't this great? The decor here is Baltimore and Ohio Royal Blue. Bedspread Royal Blue. Cabinet Royal Blue. Some more B&O paintings and pictures.
Oh, and here's, uh, this is a new feature here under the new owner, I believe, uh, times the trains past the end here. And there's 38G that we just saw heading from Conway to Abrams. Says he's due to pass 4 a.m. to 10 a.m., but subject to delay. Well, he was delayed today, <laughs> being that it's afternoon. Being that it's uh, now 4.07 p.m., 38G was delayed, wasn't he? 38G says is uh, due to pass between, f it says 38G is due to pass here between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. Now it's after 4 p.m. Let's go to the next room. Here we have the Weary Eerie Room. Everything in this room is eerie colors, eerie green, eerie caboose photo. So green is the theme here in the Erie Room. Right now, staying here, we have John that just arrived from Paducah, Kentucky. Um, Rocky and his uh, partner, or our uh, wife, uh, India, uh, they're from Chico, I think, a place on the Delmarva Peninsula in Virginia, Chico Peak or something like that. That looks like Staruka Viaduct. And the Erie Room has three beds. Let's go back to the B&O room quickly. I don't think I showed you the whole room. Here's the other part of the B&O room. So there's two more beds, three beds here in the uh, B&O room.
Even the towels are oil blue. be a Howard Fogg painting. On to the next room. Yeah, the carpeting looks kind of blue too. My favorite room, having worked for the Pennsylvania Railroad as a co-op student when I attended Drexel University in Philadelphia in 1964-1969. Standard Railroad of the World room. The P Company, Pennsylvania Railroad, PRR. And the owner thinks of everything. Everything is Tuscan red, Pensy Tuscan red here. Oh, there's another train going down the west slope. Tuscan red. The chair is Tuscan red. Everything's Tuscan red. Fantastic. Look at this on the chair. Grand and great number one electric locomotive in the world at GG1. Pensy GG1. Two beds here, and a third Tuscan red bed. Even the drapes, curtains are Tuscan red. So there's another grab iron in the bathroom safety first. And there's that intermodal still rumbling by down going down the east slope heading to heading toward Johnstown, Pittsburgh. Hey, we have a pair of EMD Pensy E8s. Even the lampshade is Tuscan red. Boy, this owner really knows what he's doing. My gosh, here comes another train. Helpers, light helpers going up the west slope. EMD stroke, Norfolk Southern Altoona Juniata Works SD70 ACU locomotives. Two stroke cycle power. That looks like a Ted Rose painting her watercolor. I think that's a Ted Rose. I think I've seen that before in a magazine, Ted Rose watercolor. A 
Bye bye, P Company. No, oh, we've missed one room right here. This should be the eighth and final room, the Western Maryland room. And the former owner, <clears throat> Tom Davis, I know he worked, spent time working for the Western Maryland Railroad, I think also the Black River and Western, my room. And Western Maryland had red in their logo, so red is the decor here in the Western Maryland room. It's like uh, Western Maryland FAs, Alco F, <clears throat> Alco FAs. My, that looks like Gettysburg on the Western Maryland. Western Maryland stock certificate on the wall. And the Western Maryland room has three beds. There's another safety first grab iron in the bathroom. Magazines to read in every room. And it is now 4.20 p.m. Monday, October 3rd, 2022. And our tour of the station in at Crescent, Pennsylvania has now been concluded. Over and out.